Okay, so in this video, we will discuss the idea of completing squares, which is simply to remove the linear factor in a quadratic polynomial. So let's go through a few examples. Suppose we have the quadratic polynomial x squared minus 6x plus 14. We ask, can we square something, a linear polynomial, that will result in exactly the right quadratic term and the right linear term? And of course here, as twice of negative 3 is negative 6, it's simply x minus 3. But if you think of it, x minus 3, if you square this then, will get you x squared minus 3x minus 3x, so minus 6x, negative 3 times negative 3 plus 9. So this term gives you the first two terms exactly, the quadratic term, check, the linear term, check, and we're off by a constant. And of course we ask, well what do we add to x minus 3 squared to get to a positive 14 constant? Well we of course add plus 5. And this is the completion of the squares for x squared minus 6x plus 14. And you see we have eliminated the linear factor, the multiple of x. All we have now is something squared plus a constant. And that's our completion of the squares. What if we had x squared minus 6x plus 5? Well, clearly, we'll have the same x minus 3 squared. And now we know that if we expand this out, we'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9. What do we add to 9 to get to 5? Of course, it is negative 4. And once again, we have eliminated the linear factor the multiple of x, all we have is something squared plus negative 4. What if there is no constant term, and you'll see that it makes no difference. So we could look at, say, x squared minus 2x. Well, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, and so we'll go with x minus 1. And if we square this, we get, of course, x squared minus 2x plus 1. So we get the right quadratic and the right linear. Of course, we're off by plus 1, and we need to have a 0. So we subtract 1, and we're done. And once again, we have eliminated the linear factor, and we're left with something squared plus the constant negative 1. What if we had, say, a negative in front of the x squared. So far, all three were multiplied by positive 1. What if we consider it, say, minus x squared, positive 6x? And the idea is when you have a negative multiple of the quadratic term, factor a negative from the expression, and then you can complete the squares as before. So factor the negative 1, that leaves you with x squared minus 6x. So, We'll go with x minus 3 all squared. If we expand again, this gives us x squared minus 6x plus 9. We want a 0. So, of course, we add the 9, negative 9. And that leaves us with x squared minus 6x. Check. And in the end, we simply redistribute our negative 1, which will give us positive 9 minus x minus 3 squared. And there you go. Once again, we have eliminated the linear factor, the multiple of x, a constant minus something squared. So that takes care of positive and negatives, but so far we've only had one or negative one, so let's throw in some different constants in there. What if we looked at 4x squared minus 12x plus 13? Well, what squared will give us 4x squared? This is, of course, 2x. And so what will be here will be multiplied by 2. So half of 12 is 6, and half of 6 is 3. So if we go with negative 3 here, we'll get, if we square this out, 4x squared 
minus 6x minus 6x, so minus 12x, plus negative 3 times itself, plus 9. So we have the right quadratic term, the right linear factor, we're off by a constant, so we add to 9, of course, 4, to get to 13. And so there you go. Let's do one more example with now a negative term, so negative 16x squared, positive 40x, positive 11. Now we have a negative multiple of x squared, so let's factor the negative from our polynomial. 16x squared, negative 40x, negative 11. Negative up something squared, so to get to 16x squared, we'll have 4x. So every term here will be multiplied by 4, and we'll have half of 40, which is 20, so 4 times, of course, 5 is 20, as it is negative, negative 5. So let's expand this to see what is the constant term. So we have this squared, 16x squared, negative 20x, negative 20x, so negative 40x, plus negative 5 squared, plus 25. Well, what do we add to 25 to give us negative 11? Of course, this is negative 36. And finally, we redistribute our negative sign, and we conclude that we are left with negative negative, so positive 36, minus 4x minus 5, all squared. And there you go, once again we have eliminated the linear factor, the multiple of x. And so you could see now that it's not too hard to figure out what happens in general. So this will be our conclusion. If you a is positive, and you consider a quadratic polynomial, ax squared, plus bx plus c, of course if a is negative, you simply factor the negative sign, and now you have a positive a. And it's not too hard to see that, of course, to get ax squared, you have to square the square root of a, x, plus, you want to cancel here the root of a, but you'll have twice of those, so you put a 2, so 2 root of a, and you want a b, so it's just b over 2 root of a, and you're, ask, well, you're asking what's left over. Well, if you square this, you get ax squared, check. You'll have twice of this times this, so the root of a will cancel. The 2 over 2 will cancel, and you'll be left with bx, check, plus your constant term c. But you'll have a leftover here of this term squared, which is b squared over 4a. So you have to remove it from c to arrive at the exact completion of the squares. And that's it. So in general, whenever a is positive, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to this, and that is the completion of the squares in general. And you can see why we require a to be positive as we take the square root of a. So root of ax plus b over 2 root of a squared plus the old constant minus the new constant coming out of squaring the first term. And that's it.